the numerous fact checks on what he said and none on what she said. None. I don't remember a single fact check of anything she said, and she lied repeatedly. She just got away with it. In the moderator's eyes, that was Donald Trump's job to fact check her. That's correct. Except you didn't employ that same tactic when it came to Trump. And you accused him of lying. On her podcast, Megyn Kelly expressed strong frustration over what she saw as biased treatment by the moderators during the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Sam Cedar and Emma Vigeland discussed this on The Majority Report, analyzing Kelly's reaction and breaking down the key moments. In this video, we'll review clips from Sam and Emma's analysis, as well as Kelly's defense of Trump. I'll provide my own commentary throughout. So let's dive into the details and see how it all unfolded. The reality is not that he got tricked by an internet hoax that immigrants are eating cats and dogs. It's that he is trying to spur the racism and the xenophobia of his uh, political movement to get out and vote because and just using sort of narratives that stoke that. But it's going to come across as he's a crazy old man, which, OK, uh, I think that might be you know, effective uh, in many respects because sort of, you know, his racism and xenophobia is sort of built in. But the other thing, you're, the thing you're going to be hearing in right-wing circles for, um, I think, for the next week is what you hear from Megyn Kelly right here. And Megyn Kelly is really crazy here. It's like she's bleeding from everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Because those two moderators tried to sink Donald Trump tonight. The numerous fact checks on what he said and none on what she said. None. I don't remember a single fact check of anything she said. And she lied repeatedly. She just got away with it. In the moderator's eyes, that was Donald Trump's job to fact check her. That's correct. Except you didn't employ that same tactic when it came to Trump and you accused him of lying even when it was your opinion that he lied. When Trump tried to say that his comment that he lost 2020 by a whisker was him being sarcastic, David Muir actually injected saying, I didn't hear sarcasm. Who gives a shit what you heard? Whoa. Who died and let, left you political analyst in chief? You're supposed to be the objective news anchor of World News Tonight. That's a comment you make to your significant other, David. Not on the debates. I don't, it didn't sound like that to me. Shut up. That is inappropriate. It's not for you to make that call. Leave it up to Kamala Harris. Leave it up to people like me who will play the soundbite and let the audience decide. But you were out of line and they did it to him over and over and over again. And the worst, the worst piece of all of this is the obvious tactic by ABC News, which was as follows. Mr. Trump, you said something incredibly controversial and terrible. Let me remind you of what it was. Do you have any regrets or thoughts on how terrible you were? Trump answers. Vice President Harris, how bad is Trump? And then she'd answer. It happened over and over again. So, I mean, this is uh, just incredible to see because she, there was a whole freaking movie made about bombshell, about the sexual harassment at Fox News and her, vict her being victimized by it and like her basically being forced out because she was adversarial to Trump and because of the fact that she ended up speaking out about what Roger Ailes did to her and, and other women as well. Um, but the reality is, is like, there's no place for her to go anymore. Yeah. Like there's nothing. She, she tried to pivot to daytime TV, right. but uh, if you recall, she like got, you know, the, she left Fox News. She was on the Today Show, I think. Emma Vigeland makes a valid point here, but Megyn Kelly has definitely found her niche. While I can't speak to her personal feelings, it seems like she's embraced her new role outside of mainstream media after being pushed out. Judging by the views her content gets, she's likely making good money, but it's clear she's catering to a MAGA audience. Kelly portrays herself as objective, but a lot of her content revolves around defending Donald Trump. For example, 
When Trump makes unfounded claims, like immigrants eating people's pets, any responsible moderator would fact-check that, because it's simply false. Yet, Kelly has positioned herself as someone who avoids holding Trump accountable, instead going all in on his defense. It seems like Kelly may be bitter about being ousted from the mainstream media circle, missing the high-profile gigs and events in Washington and New York. But now, she's found a new path by appealing to a loyal pro-Trump audience. Unfortunately, this has come at the cost of objectivity, as her content now focuses primarily on defending Trump and pushing MAGA narratives. She sucked because that's like what that Hoda and those women and stuff. That's for like making people happy and showing videos of cats and she or, and, and she or, or what recipe you should do for Halloween or whatever. And she is a cold person who also was a bigot and ended up uh, ha leaving that that network because she's made a, like a bunch of past racist comments about Santa being white or whatever. Like she's a right winger, but she tried to pivot and failed. And now there's no there's no place where she can she can carve out that middle ground. Right now. She's just taking Tim Pool. I mean, now honestly, she's, she's got a, a she's Daily got to interview host, Dave host. Rubin yeah. multiple times that. I'm not sure anybody deserves that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's doing. She flopped and then she has to be a right. She just has to be a standard Republican now because there's no way to differentiate yourself here. She's sucked back into the Trump black hole because she has to I, make money. I, I think that she may have a point with Muir saying it didn't sound sarcastic to me. I think really what would have been more appropriate for him to go like, really? Really? I'll be honest. I just watched it, and it did not sound sarcastic. Well, yeah, do you I'm have it? Shocked. Let's yeah, put it up. I, let's, I, put it I mean, let's, let's be... Yeah. Let's, let's be... Let's let the people decide. Because, of course, you know, saying it's sarcastic, um, I, I guess if you're Muir, you could have said, well, in what way is that sarcastic? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. But here is the, uh, here is the uh, original clip. Oh, I see it. At a Moms for Liberty event. I mean, honestly, we had millions of more votes than we did in the first election. We did great in the first one. We won. And I was told we got 63 million votes in the first election. I was told if we got 60, 63 million votes, same number, there's no way we can be defeated. I got 10 or 12 million votes more than that, more than anybody had ever got. We got the most votes of anybody, of any sitting president in history. And he beat us by a whisker, and it was a terrible thing. They used COVID to nominally. I mean, but wait, oh, he says it was a terrible thing, and they used COVID as if, like, if it was sarcastic, you wouldn't start listing why you got beat by a whisker. Yeah, didn't sound sarcastic to me. That, it, that didn't sound sarcastic to me either. I'm not even clear. Uh... One of the common tactics with MAGA supporters is that whenever Donald Trump or any Republican politician gets called out for being wrong or making misleading statements, the fallback is often, it was a joke or it was sarcasm. They claim the left just doesn't get humor. This has become their go-to defense, even when the statements are completely off base, like the claim about immigrants eating pets. And while they push these narratives, someone will eventually try to pass it off as a joke, suggesting that the left can't take it lightly. As for Megyn Kelly, it seems like she's fully shifted her focus to playing to a MAGA audience. Emma Vigeland pointed out that Kelly didn't really succeed on Fox or NBC. NBC's decision to give her a daytime show, something typically lighter in tone, was a misstep, given that Kelly's style isn't suited for that format. Now, she's found her lane among other figures like Tim Poole and Dave Rubin, where much of the content revolves around defending Trump and criticizing woke culture. It'll be interesting to see what happens with these shows, especially if Trump loses. A lot of the content relies heavily on Trump's presence and MAGA-related controversies. Once that fades, they'll have to find something else to focus on. Kelly has already made a career out of pushing the same talking points about wokeness and defending Trump, but how long can that last if the political landscape changes? Do you think Megyn Kelly has a valid point about the moderators being biased against Trump, or is she just pivoting to Trump's defense for the sake of staying relevant 
as Sam Cedar and Emma Vigelin suggest. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support helps the channel grow, and I'll be bringing you more content like this in the future. See you in the next video.